You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. In March 2001, two goals in two minutes changed Ricardo Kaká's life. It was the second leg of the final in the Rio Sao Paulo tournament, and despite holding a 4-1 lead on aggregate, Kaká's Sao Paulo, the club he'd joined as a child and for whom he'd only made his professional debut two months before, were 1-0 down. Within a few minutes, everything would be different. First, the substitute would calmly side foot an equaliser, and then, barely 120 seconds later, he would shimmy past the defender on the edge of the box and slide a winner inside the far post, putting the tie well beyond doubt and securing a title that Sao Paulo had never previously won. Suddenly, his world was altered. Kaka would start to be recognised in the street, and journalists would appear outside of his house. His rise to the very top of the game had begun. It might have been very different. As a teenager, Kaka had dived into a swimming pool and hit his head on the bottom, damaging vertebrae in the process. Doctors would tell him that he was fortunate, that his avoidance of life-changing injury was a gift from God, and Kaka, raised a Christian in a religious family, would wear that faith throughout his career. Nevertheless, within 12 months of scoring those famous goals, Kaka would be a Brazilian international debuting against Bolivia, and would be included in Luis Felipe Scolare's 23-man squad for the 2002 World Cup. It was a team led by Ronaldo, Rivaldo and Ronaldinho, and Kaka was limited to just a single substitute appearance in the group stage. But it brought a winner's medal and invaluable experience alongside some of the greatest Brazilian players in history. Back at Sao Paulo, life was complicated, with the club beset by financial strife. We don't want to sell him, manager Carlos Augusto de Barros said of Kaka in 2003. But we're getting to the point where we'll have to, even for less than the $20 million that we want. And Kaka, of course, wasn't short of suitors. By Leverkusen and Brescia had made formal inquiries, while Juventus and Manchester United were also rumoured to carry an interest. But in August 2003, with some Sao Paulo players having not been paid for two months, he was sold to AC Milan for just over $8 million. And it was a perfect fit. Rivaldo was already at San Zero, and Kaka sought his advice before making the move. And Cafu, Serginho, and goalkeeper Dida ensured that he was joining an already strong Brazilian contingent. Plus, Milan were also hugely talented. Clarence Seydorf and Andrea Pirlo were part of Carlo Ancelotti's midfield, Andrei Shevchenko was 27 years old and in his prime, and in addition to Rivaldo, Kaka would fight for a place behind the forward line with Manuel Rui Costa, the mercurial Portuguese. Now, as it turned out, the 21-year-old Kaka would prove invaluable immediately, as Milan ran away with Serie A to win the Scudetto by 11 points. And 14 all-competition goals in that first season showed his range. Kaka was predatory and full of poise. He could score with the inside or the outside of his foot, or with his head, and he could finish first time and from close range, as well as after long ranging runs during which he glided past defenders before accelerating away from them. And one of the most pertinent observations about Kaka was that he wasn't particularly South American in style. He was skillful and full of flair. The creativity and class of his passing was easily a match for his goal scoring, but he was also lightning quick and powerful. He was a very European player in style and he'd be crowned Footballer of the Year in Italy at the end of that first season. While his Milan were never quite as successful as they might have been over the next three years, and Brazil would suffer a disappointing World Cup exit to France in 2006, his individual performances for his clubs were often otherworldly. For instance, while the 2005 European Cup final is remembered for Liverpool's thrilling comeback, Kaka gave one of the great midfield performances in Istanbul creating all three Milan goals, assisting a further two that were ruled offside, and arguably playing one of the finest through passes in modern football history, from which Hernan Crespo scored to make it 3-0. In 2007, though, there would be no asterisks. Milan would win the Champions League, and Kaka would be fundamental, scoring a tie-winning goal against Celtic in the first knockout round, and producing two brilliant individual moments at Old Trafford against Manchester United in the semi-final second leg. His second that evening remains one of the best goals the Champions League has ever seen. Kaka would also be crowned World Player of the Year in 2007, winning the Ballon d'Or by a landslide from Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. He reached an extraordinary level, said Carlo Ancelotti, recalling that period in an interview with Bein. Kaka, Ancelotti and Milan would go on to complete the set in club football. He scored in the Super Cup, 
as Sevilla were beaten and he was player of the tournament at the Club World Cup too, in which Milan would also triumph. It was the high point of his career, and also the last time he'd win anything with Milan. The possibility of his leaving San Zero had been teased before 2009, most notably when newly wealthy Manchester City made an astronomical bid which was rejected. But he would eventually be sold to Real Madrid for almost 70 million euros. He was signed by Florentina Perez, who had just returned as Real president, and as a statement, Kaka's arrival felt like a revival of the Galactico project from the beginning of the decade. The world's best player was being signed, regardless of whether he was needed or not. His first season in Spain lived up to its billing, but a knee injury in 2010 would change his trajectory. Whether because of a loss of confidence, through natural decline, or because he was never really the focal point of a Madrid side attuned to Cristiano Ronaldo, Kaka's time in Madrid never reached the heights it had in Milan. And he was never really the same player again, nor was he ever an automatic starter after his injury. In 2013, he would leave Real on a free and return to Milan for a single season. He was 31 years old. Injuries and time had eroded his remarkable acceleration and power that had once characterised his playing style. But there were still flashes of the wonderful player that he'd been. He scored a memorable double against Inter Milan and with his last goal for the club, bent in a fabulous shot from the corner of the box against Chievo. It was also his last goal in Europe. For a swan song, Kaka headed to the United States and the new MLS franchise in Orlando via a half-season loan back in Sao Paulo. His pace was on the wane by the time he became an Orlando City Lion, but his touch was not, nor was his craft. His three years in the US may not have featured a playoff appearance, but he did receive three all-star selections and could still be depended upon for the occasional artful goal or measured touch. In 2017, he would announce his retirement, bringing to a close a career which was perhaps overshadowed by what Messi and Ronaldo achieved in the years after, but which, for the years prior to 2010, produced a remarkable level of consistent attacking midfield excellence. Testament to that is that Kaka remains one of only four Brazilians to win the Ballon d'Or, alongside Ronaldo, Rivaldo and Ronaldinho, and also that the game is yet to produce another player like him. Equal parts force and grace, a footballer of searing dynamism and balletic balance. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Mark Carey. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you, and you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.